Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs. Today, I'm joined by my wife as we look at a game that we both love that we played 100 times in 2020 alone. Today, we look at the two to four player game from Starling Games. We're checking out Everdale. So the radar overview for Everdale looks something like this. You got this nice ever tree that is kind of the focal point of the game. It's got the critters that you'll be collecting throughout the game as well as some special vents. It holds all of these cards. And then underneath the ever tree, you have locations to visit as well as this meadow in which um, players can be building cards from this and uh, going to different places on the board. How exactly does this game work? Well, it is a worker placement game for two to four players and everybody will be trying to build the greatest city. And how do you do that? This is how. On your turn, you will be placing a worker. There are two different types of uh, locations in this game. There are closed. It's got a full circle, meaning only one player can go there. Or you have an open and that means multiple players can go there. So on your turn, you'll be placing workers, or building a card, or you will be preparing for season. How does that work? Let's show you. Let's say at the beginning of the game, I have a hand uh, that looks like this, okay? I got a farm, a postal pigeon, an inn, a ranger, as well as a wife. So the farm, these cards, always a good, good to uh, play production cards at the start of the game because these production cards noted by this little leaf here they will reactivate two more times uh, throughout the game so the cost of the card is in this top left corner cost two twigs and one resin to build so there's a few different places on the board to to, to gain these resources so i'll go here give me one twig one resin as well as one berry Okay, then it'll be the next player's turn. Let's say they go here and they gain themselves two resin. Back to me, I will say this. Um, the critters in this game are fantastic. You got uh, the squirrel, and here I placed down a hedgehog. You also, uh, this is uh, the components of the deluxe edition. So the base game comes with uh, mice as well as turtles. I'll flip that guy around turtles and then in the um, collector edition you also get a black player which is rats deluxe edition also gets these uh, nice metal shiny coins they're called shinies in the game uh, because look they are definitely shiny you also have wooden occupy tokens which i'll explain in a moment what those are for but the other player they got two resin back to me i will you know what i need another twig and so i will go here and i'll gain three twigs one two three back to the first player or the other player let's say they, they're trying to build this uh resin refinery they would go here they gain one pebble and it'd be come back to my turn swing this around here these are all my resources and then i want to build the farm like i said resources costs in the corner a farm two twigs and a resin i play that into my city and then i would return to the supply the two twigs as well as the resin and then i would activate it right away and the farm gains me one berry i would take a berry from the general supply and that would be my turn i have now built a card it will come back to the other player and they have uh, two resin and a pebble and they're going to build the resin refinery then anytime you build from the meadow, you then replace it immediately. And now this card is available for everybody to, to purchase as well. Or not purchase, build. Back to my player, or back to my turn. I have this farm. In the bottom right corner, it has two cards that correspond. So every construction corresponds with a critter and vice versa. And for the farm, it's the husband and the wife. It just so happens that I have a, a wife in my hand. So instead of playing the two berries, I can then play this for free. I place it, I can only get either one or the other, not both. I can't get the husband and wife for free. So in this case, I take the wife for free and that's when I take one of these Occupy tokens and I put it in the corner here to say that 
I have used that uh, that free character, and then that would be my turn. It would be the next player's turn. So turns go around the table, and you either are placing workers, collecting resources, or you are building cards. Or yeah, you're building cards when you cannot build, or you would do not want to. And all your workers are out. All your workers have to be out before you prepare for season. You would then prepare for season. Okay, so we're going to move back up to the ever tree here. So it says. When you prepare for spring, you will reactivate all of these production cards. So if I'd be preparing, I'd be getting one more berry. And then I'd be taking my character off the tree as well. Okay, anytime you prepare for summer, you again take another character, you draw two cards from the meadow up to a hand limit of eight. Very strict hand limit, eight cards and eight cards only. Okay. So those are your three actions. You place workers to gain resources, you build cards, or you prepare for season. I'll touch on the special events on the Evertree here. So these are different every game. There's a whole bunch of them in the game. And these are just different objectives. And I'll explain uh, with a few of these. So this one, you would have to have the inn and the bard in your city. And uh, you would have to place a worker there. And then uh, when you do that, when you achieve, you may place up to three berries there that you would have at that moment, not at the end of the game. Right then and there, you'd have to place three berries there. At the end of the game, you get two victory points for each berry on this event. And then they have one like this, Everdell Games. If you can get two of each of these five different types of cards in your city, you gain nine resources. So yeah, there are, nine, there are five different types of cards in the game. As you can see, um, the farm is the, already the production, and then you have um, you have this governance card. So they have this little blue scroll there. Um, when you build these, or when you build the courthouse, it's worth two victory points at the end of the game. After you play a construction for the rest of the game, once it's built, you gain one resource, either a twig, resin, or pebble. The university. This is the destination. You can go there. Um, if you go there, you can then discard a critter or a construction from your city, gain the resources equal to that card's cost, then gain an additional resource and an additional victory point. These prosperity cards, end game scoring, one victory point for each unique critter in your city. And then um, the fourth and the fifth type of card is the Tan Traveler. And they activate immediately and um, they have a special, a special effect. So the ranger here, you can move one deployed worker to a new location. Fantastic card, you put that down and then you move your character somewhere else on the board. So turns will continually going around the table. Um, I will say this, people will be moving into and out of seasons at different paces. I'll talk about more of that in the uh, final forecast, but um, the game will end when everybody has finished their turn. So the game doesn't end at the exact same time for everybody, although everybody will go through spring, summer, autumn. At the end of the game, you then add up the victory points on all of your cards, plus any victory points you have. Some of them, like I said, the prosperity, scory victory points, and whoever has the most victory points is the winner. I will say this as well, 15 cards, that is how many you can have in your tableau. You can never have more than 15. And then whoever again has the most points is the winner of Everdell. Onto the final forecast. So there you have the overview, radar overview for Everdell. A game that is stunningly, it just looks unbelievable on the table. You got that nice ever tree and what do you think of the production quality on Everdell? Yeah, it's nice. Um, yeah, it's a good looking game. What do you think of like the resources? I don't know, uh, I didn't show on the, uh, the overview, mm -hmm. but all the resources, the berries alone, they're like squishy. They look absolutely super cool. How about the pebbles? Yeah, they're nice. They're like just like nice smooth stones. Yep. And then you got the, the resin as well as the uh, twigs just unbelievable artwork you like the artwork yeah i mean the animals are um kind of cute so yeah. the artwork's appealing for sure i'm not even an animal fan like i me like, neither yeah i'm just we're not we don't need pets like yeah, we're not exactly but and yet this is really 
But I was drawn in. I was drawn in from the first time I actually saw the artwork. The artwork drew me in. Andrew Bosley did an unbelievable job of uh, the artwork in this game. And so that's like a... It it just draws you in. I think every time um, I've played with new people, or we've played with new people, which in 2020 was a very, very small amount of people, um, just people just look at the artwork and like, this is fantastic. But And for someone like me who doesn't like game super heavy this is nice because usually a game like this would be like a some sort of i don't know like space theme or something that doesn't appeal to me but this is just different so yeah. it's nice exactly so okay moving along from artwork um what did you think it's pretty simple you got like three choices to do on your turn you either place a worker you build yep. a card or you prepare for season did you find that challenging or what were your thoughts on on the um the choices every turn yeah i mean I, it's easy for me to say now that it's pretty simple because i played it so much but i remember at the beginning uh feeling like it did take me several games to get into yeah. but uh after yeah after a few plays it's it's totally it's good I, I think um, the first time you ever play Everdell, you're probably going to have a terrible game and you may score like 20 points. Yeah. Like legitimately. And you can have a 15 card limit in your city. And I remember the first few times we played that, we're like, how on earth are you ever going to get 15 cards in your city? Yeah, it feels like you're going to end up with like three cards in your city, but it ends up, I mean, after a couple games, it's, it's better. And then after we played, like I said, we've played over 100 now. Um, your city fills up too fast and you're like I need more room in my city and so you're looking for certain cards and this game I feel do you feel it's a comboing game like you can combo cards yeah I'm learning how to combo (laughs) like for for a long time there I just kind of did very simple things and now I'm learning that you can do more complicated things yeah you were like farm 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 right I like the production cards but now I'm getting more into the other ones so yeah. yeah, like uh, the governance cards, like I showed in the, in the overview, like the, the courthouse, you know, every time you build a, re- uh, a construction after you build the courthouse, you gain a resource back. Yeah. So, of course, that is a unique construction. Um, I forgot to mention this game has uh, the five different types of cards, but it's got common and unique type of cards. So you can have unlimited common cards in your city, but you can only have one of unique construction, meaning like you can only have one theater or you can only have one courthouse, but you can can have multiple farms in the game. But um, yeah, this is just an unbelievable, Ever- Everdell is, is un- unbelievable uh, of a game. Um, I know you, like you said, you like the, the, the farm, but the governance cards, much like the courthouse, you yeah. really like those combos. And then- yeah, I mean, I have certain cards that I like um, now after playing it so much. Cards that I kind of just wait for or look for. Mm-hmm. Um, like the courthouse is really good. I don't know what else do I like. I mean, the chip sweep is awesome because you can reactivate something in your city. Mm-hmm. You get a reactivated uh, production card. So that one I like. There's a whole bunch. It, I still love the farm. <laughs> goes back to the farm and the farm is actually it's cool because you go back to the farm and um james wilson james a wilson the designer the farm was like the first card he designed so i think that's cool um back to the evertree um you got to put this thing together every time and so it is a little bit finicky i know they they sell a wooden evertree we actually don't even play with the evertree anymore because after you play it so many times it kind of just starts getting uh torn and whatnot but i i love the addition of the evertree and this the evertree wasn't uh just like something that the uh, the publisher decided hey let's just throw this in for gimmick no the evertree was something that the designer started when he when he first started designing this game um i've seen pictures of prototypes of the evertree and it, he just made it kind of out of cardboard and whatnot and he had the special events just sitting on there and just um so just uh, i don't know just a fantastic design i've heard people say it's weird that you move into the different seasons at different paces like you know what i mean yeah. like i can sometimes i'm i'm in well, summer we and played, yeah we just played a game where someone was in 
like winter and the other person was like in summer already so it's two seasons ahead or whatever yeah like if you can get certain cards and um you know just sometimes i finish the game like well before brent and he just has well, to finish uh, the game alone but it, it's it's crazy it's such a well-balanced design that even if you have like yeah um you finish your game first and then you when you finish your game, you just pass, and then it just continues going around the table until everybody has fa everybody has passed, in a in a two player game. Then yeah, it's just it doesn't one feel unbalanced. It's not like it's not a negative thing. It's fine. This is a game, so I like typically I like short games yeah. that are quick because I don't love hours and hours of gaming like Brent does. Um, and this game, like we played it so many times. I think the minimum amount of time it takes to play is an hour, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's like a quick, sometimes it's like two, two hours, but I will say this, it never feels that long. So for someone who's not really a gamer, I'm saying that even when it takes two hours, it never feels like two mm -hmm. hours. It's yeah. always like, whoa, like it, it's 11 o'clock or whatever, like, you know, yeah. it's always... Um, it always goes by super quick, so. And I, I've said multiple times here on the channel that my 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 niche or not my niche my my sweet spot for gaming is thirty to sixty minutes, um, and there is exceptions. And Everdell is is kind of that one exception that I can play this game for two hours. It doesn't feel like two hours. Um, it just uh, it's just so so streamlined, and the mechanics just work so well together. I find this game. Some people feel it's kind of just like, not solitaire, but like you're building your own tableau. You really like that. You're kind of building your own city yeah. and you're building your 15 cards. And there's not much interaction in that. There's one card in the game, the fool, you can throw it into another player's city and it, it just like eats up a spot. But most of the time, like there's not as much interaction when you first start playing it, but people are blocking each other in... Um, on the basic events or sorry the basic locations getting those resources and then the forest the uh, forest locations which are considerably better um large in part uh, due to they just they have more benefits and they change every game um but the strategy comes in it's not as much a strategy game in in the sense of you're like okay i'm just going to build pr production cards the whole game and i'm going to do this um it's more of a tactical game you where you look at your cards in your hand you look at the meadow and kind of every turn, you just gotta do the thing that helps you the most that turn. And you just kind of build your strategy yeah. every game. Like, I don't feel that this is a game that you can do the same thing every time. Like you just look at the meadow and you look at your cards. Yeah, you kind of just have to roll with it. Yeah. Like whatever happens, happens type thing. Because there's so many cards in this game. I mean, like, like, Right? So you're not going to see, typically, you're not going to see all of them in and, a game. Right. And that, that's something that people maybe don't um, appreciate about the game. Or maybe the first few times you'll play and you're like, how on earth am I ever going to find this one card? There's one or two cards, like the Ranger, okay? Yeah. Uh, really powerful card, I feel. A powerful card. Uh, it lets you move one of your already deployed workers. So you... You play that, and it's almost like another free turn moving your uh, your worker to gain more resources or maybe move to an event or whatever, what, what have you. But there's only two rangers in the game, and they're paired, and uh, the ranger's paired with the dungeon. So sometimes you'll play a game, and you'll see the ranger, and you won't see a dungeon, or, right. you know, you won't see that. And I think the first few times you play that, you may don't get um, dis um, discouraged by that, right? Yeah, like... I remember the first, it might have been like the second or third game that Brent and I played of this uh, back in 2020, and I was like, Brent, I, I'm i lost. Like, I don't know what any of these cards mean. I have no idea. Because it takes some time, <laughs> too, to learn the cards. So that's mm -hmm. important to remember, too. Like, give yourself a few plays, because once you start to get to know the cards, then the game becomes a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you can start deck diving, yeah. looking for certain cards. There's there's uh, cards that let you you know discard cards and pick up more cards and things like that. So overall, just an absolutely gem of a game, like legitimately, absolutely fantastic. So there are almost no games that I would play a hundred times. Yeah, so th this that says something about this game. Th this has to be like one of 
my highest played games ever and I only got it in the beginning of 2020 so um, we played this an absolute ton and it so, wasn't just because of quarantine it was because we liked the game yeah it's, it really <laughs> is that good we played like a couple times a day you know afternoon and then the evening pulled out again and there's a lot to set up and tear down but it's it's definitely well worth it so yeah. taking a look um, I know on, here on the channel I give everything uh, a a probability of meeples like the weather um, and so what would you give this on a scale of z zero to a hundred I don't know if my rating is like worth as much because I'm not really again whatever <laughs> I, <laughs> I game but not not like Brent so um I mean obviously I like the game like it's I don't know if there's anything wrong with it to be honest so i would give it a 10. you give it a 10 and that translates to 100 percent. this is an absolute absolute amazing game 100 percent chance meeples the best the best of the best in my opinion this is by far is my favorite game and it's almost like people ask me what's your favorite game okay easy everdell and then they're like what's your second favorite game and it's so hard because Everdale is in a, in, in a league, in a class, in a world of its own for us. Like, this game is absolutely that good. So, I know there's more, ex uh, there's expansions. They got the Belfair and Pearlbrook and Spirecrest. And those just make it better. Make it better. We'll take a look at those in the, uh, in, in, in the weeks to come. And then there's two new expansions that uh, just finished up on Kickstarter. You got uh, Miss Wood and New Leaf. And so Everdell, unbelievable game. If you have a chance to uh, pick it up, I highly, highly recommend you do it. My name is Brent. Check us out on Facebook. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I want to say thank you to uh, my wife, Nicole, for joining. Thanks for joining us You're today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Check us out on Facebook. And remember, grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Ooh.